Today, we're going to be creating this particular loop. It's really quick and really easy, so let's start right off. We're going to keep our default cube and open a new window by going here and clicking and dragging. We're going to change this to the geometry node editor, and then we're going to click new to add in a new geometry node tree. Now we're not going to require the group input, so we're just going to select it and hit X to delete it. Then we're going to search for a mesh line, and we're going to plug the mesh into the geometry so that we actually get a line. Now we have to instance circles onto each of the points of this mesh. So we're going to search for an instance on points node and we're going to place that right here. And for the instance, we're actually going to search for a circle. We can use the curved circle or the mesh circle. So for simplicity, we'll use the curved circle for now. Now we take this and place it into the instance. Now you see each of the curves or each of the circles go up, but we want all of them to have the center at the same place. So we're just going to change the offset on the mesh line node to zero. And now we have 10 circles overlapping each other, but we also want them to scale up. So in order to do that, we're going to search for the index node and we're just going to plug that directly into the scale. However, we could add a math node for more control, but right now we don't necessarily require it. So now we have to instance our circles onto each of these circles or our spheres onto each of these circles. So let's search for an instance on points node again, or we can just shift D and duplicate this instance on points. And now, search for our UV spheres, UV sphere, and just plug the mesh into the instance. Of course, they're all going to be way too large. So let's just change the scale down to something like 0 0.01. And that's too small. So maybe 0 0.1. Play around till you get the size that you think works best. Now you'll notice that each of these spheres are not smooth. So in order to make them smooth, we're just going to search for a set shade smooth node and just plug that in right after the UV sphere. Now we want these spheres to actually bounce up and down. In order to do that, we're going to add in a new modifier. So let's go to the modifiers tab here, add modifier and search for the wave modifier. Now, if you actually play the animation, you'll realize nothing is happening. And that's because each of these spheres have not been realized as instances. So let's select our geometry node modifier over here and take the output, just move it back a bit and just realize the instances. So let's search for a realize instance node and plug that in right over here. So now you can actually see that the wave modifier is doing something. Now you'll notice that your viewport does become very laggy. So what we're going to do is instead of using the UV spheres, we're just going to search for a cube and we're just going to plug the cube into the geometry while we do all of the messing around with the animations. So now you see it is jumping up and down, but it starts from a flat position and moves out and is way too close to each other and things like that. So in order to fix that, we're going to go ahead and start off by increasing the width to something really high, let's say four meters for now, and the height also to something really large, so maybe two meters. And now you can see that it's far too narrow. You can see that the wave is happening only over there. So we can just decrease the narrowness to maybe something like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. So I think 0 0.2 is working fairly well. Now the thing is that we need this to loop. So in order to do that, we're going to make a few changes. We'll first go ahead and set all of our animation defaults. So in our render properties, let's switch on bloom. Let's switch on screen space reflections and then go to the output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. Of course, change the frame range to end at 300. We will change this and have a slightly shorter animation sooner. Change the output to double slash so that it gets saved wherever you saved your Blender file, if that's what you want. Otherwise, change it to what you where you want to save it. Change the file format to FFmpeg video, container to MPEG4, output quality to perceptually lossless. So now to make it loop, just go ahead and increase the timeline. Notice where the entire animation finally reaches the end, because you see from here it starts and it still hasn't reached the edge. So around here it reaches the edge. So we could start here, but we don't know whether we want a few more of these lines. So let's just go into our camera view, select our camera, go here, change the focal length to something like 25, and then tap N, view, camera to view, and then tap N to remove that. And also just change the viewport display all the way to one the passport out all the way to one so that nothing else distracts us. Now let's just place our camera to something like this. So that looks fair enough. If you want it to be perfect, you could just play around with it or go to the object properties tab here and just change all of these to whatever seems like would be the perfect values. So now we want these to actually cross completely out of the camera view. So to do that, we're just going to add in a few more circles. So to do that, you just increase the count. So we can just increase the count just enough so that it goes outside the camera view. So I think 20 is good enough. So there we go. Now that we have this set up, you have to notice where it completely finishes reaching the absolute edge. And that 
seems like anything after frame number 70 would make sense. So let's go out of the camera view, switch on overlays once again, hit one and just reduce the count to maybe something like five so that we can see it better. And then just hit the play and notice right after 70, when's the first time that the innermost circle reaches the absolute bottom. So we're searching for anything after 70. So over here, you can see that as we go frame by frame, it's going down and down until frame 85. After 85, it goes up. So frame number 85 is where we're going to start our animation. So let's come here and just type frame 85. And now let's go towards the end and around here, just before 300, see when's the last time that it does that. And that happens at frame 279. So we're, we can end it at frame 279, but that way there would be one frame repeating between the start and end. So if you go to frame 85, you see it's the exact same. So what we can do is instead of ending it at 279, we can just end it at 278 and that will give you the perfect looping animation. And once you have that set, you can go ahead and increase the count back to 20. Now you can go into your camera view and just watch it perfectly loop. Now that you have a perfectly looping animation, we can deal with the actual shading. So in order to actually deal with the shading, first we have to make sure that we set a material to this. So let's just tap N to remove this side panel, go to the end of the geometry node tree and after the realize instances, just set the materials, search for the set material node and just place that here. And there's already a default material. So we're just going to keep that default material itself. Now we don't require this geometry node window anymore for the time being. So we can just go ahead and join areas and bring it down like that. Come here and open a new window and change this one to the shader editor. Once you've changed it to the shader editor, tap N to remove the side panel, zoom in and start playing around with it. To see the effects update, go to the viewport shading rendered. Now let's go ahead and just increase the metallicness of these spheres. Right now they're cubes, but we're going to change them to spheres. And for the roughness, let's go ahead and just search for a Voronoi texture and plug the color into a color ramp just by placing the color into the factor and the color into the roughness socket over here. Then we can take our light, hit Alt G and then just G Z so that we move it up by a little bit, select our job node again, go to our world tab and just change the color all the way to black, switch off overlays. And now we actually want the bottom of the spheres to light up as they go down. So in order to get just the bottoms lit up, we're going to search for a texture coordinate node and we're going to plug the object value into a mapping node. And now if you actually look at it, we can see how this actually works. And based on the location, we have different gradients. So now we can actually separate out the XYZ. So we can search for a separate XYZ node, plug that in right over here and just change to the Z value over here. And we should be able to see how the areas underneath the origin turn black. So when we actually take a look at it, this is what we see. Now to get further control over this, we're going to search for a color ramp and we're going to place that right here. We're going to bring the black in and also bring this white in right over here and just make sure that it's not too much. And once we have the amount that we want, we want the areas that are white to not be emissive. So we're going to change that to black and the areas that are underneath, which is this point over here that we can change to the color that we want it to radiate. So we're going to go with a nice bluish color like that. And we're going to plug this color into the emission. Then we're going to increase the emission strength to something like five and then control shift click the principal PSDF. So there we should be able to see how everything lights up at the bottom. If we feel like too much is being lit up, we can always go ahead and just decrease this and just play around with it till we get something that we are happy with. So I think I'm fairly happy with this, but I accidentally moved the camera and now I have to place the camera again. Okay, so now that I've placed the camera once again, we can go ahead and just play around with this as you feel like. And to prevent accidentally moving the camera, just switch off camera to view over here. So now I'm going to go ahead and just decrease the value over here so that we just get only the bottom halves of the cubes to actually light up. And this looks exactly like what I wanted it to be. So now that we have the waves radiating out, we can actually zoom in and take a look at what the texture currently looks like. And now we can go ahead and change this to the geometry node editor and just change these from the cubes to the UV sphere. So let's just plug the 
the UV sphere into the geometry. Now, when you do this, make sure that you save because the chances of it crashing becomes really high. So once you've saved, let's go ahead, go to the light and just change the color of the light to a nice bluish color. So that everything matches your scene nicely. We can go ahead and add in a plane behind this to get these really nice reflections. So let's just shift a mesh plane and just scale it up switch off overlays go to materials and give it a new material go ahead and increase the metallicness all the way to one and reduce the roughness quite a bit as well and just grab it on the z and just move it down a little bit so now that should look a lot better essentially i feel like that's about it for the tutorial if at all you feel like you don't want the Voronoi texture in the roughness and you just want it to be a single value of roughness all around you can go ahead and play around with values here and there to get whatever you think looks best for your particular scene and with that you can go ahead and render out the animation i hope you enjoyed this one and you've gotten a few ideas of a few techniques that can be used to create various other animations be sure to create various versions of different things like this and do share them with me whether it be on the YouTube comments or Instagram. So I will be producing a lot more of these and until then stay creative.